Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Danny Cruz, otherwise known as Pinch Tune, and today's video is a follow-up to a video I did about two or three months ago that I felt was sort of incomplete. You gotta make sure to watch the other video for this one to make sense. What we're looking at is actually crossfire and how many times it actually changes between 150 hertz, which is fast, and 50 hertz, which is what you don't want. Thanks to you guys' comments, I realized, you know, there's some, a lot more testing that I have to do, so I'm going to do it today. I'm not going to change the quad. The quad is going to be exactly the same one I used last time because I do not want things changed. Radio's the same, and uh, even the goggles, everything's going to be the same. Well, these are HD2Os, but the point is that the radio part is the same. And what happens is, last time, I tested at 25 milliwatts and 100 milliwatts how many times the radio changes crossfire changes from 150 hertz which is the fast low latency connection and 50 hertz which is the connection we don't want but it kind of has to go to that in order not to fail safe i know that today we have things like force 150 hertz and we have dynamic power but this video is a lot simpler and it's about the system at a fixed power and not using forced 150 hertz and it's mainly so that we can get a complete picture of what happened in the last video. So be sure to go check out the last video, link in the description so you can check it out for this one to actually make sense. I have a switch and a call out that tells me when the system switches from 150 hertz to 50 hertz. When the system reads 2, that is 150 hertz. When it reads 1, that is 50 hertz. During the last video, I was surprised that even at 100 milliwatts, I was getting the system switching to 50 hertz way more often than I wanted in a place that is actually kind of small and even when I had direct line of sight. I wasn't pleased about that. And normally I run my antenna flat because it just fits like that in the case. But everybody's going like, oh, you gotta go vertical. And I know vertical is better. It's just that every time I put it in the case, I have to take the antenna off or loosen it to make it fit. So today I'm gonna use the exact same antenna, but I'm gonna put it vertical Keep in mind the antenna of the quad is flat, but it doesn't matter because I'll be doing freestyle, so it kind of has every orientation. And I want to see is if um, if it switches at all, or how much it switches, or if it makes a difference to have it vertically, right? I'm not going to do 25 milliwatts because there's no point at 100 milliwatts in the last test it was switching more than I would like. So what I want to see is less switching to 50 hertz with the antenna vertical at 100 milliwatts. Depending on that test, I might crank it to 500, but more than likely I won't do that, and I'll just try and put the diamond on it to see if it makes a difference. However, if this passes the test, we'll leave it at that, all right? So let's go ahead and go for it. Right now, it's actually gonna read zero, because it has no telemetry, but as soon as I plug in the quad, it's gonna start reading it, okay? So I'll go ahead and plug in the quad. All right, got video. Some Margo. Okay. I'm gonna stay on there because I wanna. I don't wanna kill your cat. Come here. Okay. So, two. see now it's reading two because it's at 150. So I'm gonna sync it. Okay. So I'm gonna call out. You you'll hear the radio, but I'm gonna let you know when it switches. And kind of narrate the flight. Let's see uh, how this does with the general work. I'm flying all over the place, more or less the same distance as I did last time. Two. And it's locked on at Two. 150 hertz. It hasn't been switched yet. Let me go fly back here behind the trees. Two. Two still. So, yeah, it makes a bigger difference than I thought. One. Oh, one. There it is. So, there's one switch, but so far it's still better than it was before. Two. Two. Okay. Come back here again. So, okay, no question that the connection is definitely way more solid with um, with the antenna vertical like this at 100 milliwatts. 
And you know what? I'm not even gonna bother with the with the other antenna, but I'm gonna come inside. Two. And now I'm really curious to see if at um, 25 milliwatts if it stays locked, because that was obviously way better. So let me go ahead and change the power to 25 milliwatt. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna go up again. And we'll see how uh, how it responds if it stays locked in, even at 25 milliwatts. I I expect it's gonna switch, but we'll see. We'll switch off. <laughs> Oh, there's one again. One. One. Yeah, so 25 milliwatt still makes the struggle one. a little bit. One. One. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna come in. Definitely 25 milliwatts. I'm sure it's better with antenna vertical, but, but it's still not enough power. So, You know what? I, I'm sure all you guys want to see Two. how it does with the diamond. I'm gonna go ahead and try it, but it's pretty conclusive now that at 100 milliwatt with the antenna vertical, even the simple stock antenna, it is uh, way better than with the antenna flat. Like the difference is stark. Telemetry lost. But. I know you guys are going to go in the comments go like, oh, you know, why did you not run the diamond? So let's go ahead. The, the reason I'm running the diamond is because even at 100 and vertical, even though it was way better, I still got a couple of switches to, to 50 hertz. So we'll see if it switches at all with this antenna, which I'm curious about now. Okay, there we go. It's pretty vertical. Modalità maestro. Throttle warning. Engine off. Timer two. Alright, gonna go back to 100, which is the test that I'm really interested at. So, 100 milliwatts. Try this side two. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna set my call outs here. Two. There it is. When I send locked, and up you go. Engine on. Two. <laughs> Still lock that too. I know one. when I got oh there's a one again. So at the moment it seems like it's about the same. Two. 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 Still nicely locked that too. There's a one again. So it seems about the same, honestly. Two. Two. Maybe a little better. Two. I want to say it's a little better, but not enough to make a huge difference. Two. Two. Still nicely locked at two, though. So it might be it might be marginally better. Yeah, I would say so. If you have the antenna, definitely run this one because it seems a little better. Okay, let's come in. And wrap this up. Engine off. All right. Two. Okay, so I think I have a conclusion. Vertical, definitely better. This one seems a little better than this, but not that much of a difference. What really made the difference is running this vertically. So I'm gonna start doing that because even though I'm doing freestyle, I still want the crispy feel. I don't wanna switch it around all the time. So I'm gonna have to get used to just switching to vertical every time. And even racing, definitely, especially racing because you are contending with other people flying the same track and you don't wanna fail safe. 
I think that's pretty conclusive, guys. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments. If you think I should do another test of some sort, let me know. But I think it's definitely conclusive that even if you have the antenna flat on the quad, go vertical with it on the, uh, on the transmitter because it makes all the difference. There it is. Guys, subscribe if you haven't yet. Thumbs up. Share this video. This is going to be very useful for all the people. And I'll see you on the next one.